Konnichiwa, as my Japanese friends would say. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dehut. Today we're going to take a look at the analog to digital converters on the Raspberry Pi Pico. What we're going to cover today, we will look at which pins are the analog to digital converters on the Raspberry Pi Pico. We'll take a look at how to wire up a typical uh, device such as a potentiometer and then we'll look at that in MicroPython with an example program. So we'll dive right in on a, one of the drawings or sketches that is in the Getting Started with the Raspberry Pi Pico manual. And this is the one that shows the pin diagram uh, for all the I.O. devices on your Pico. Now what we're looking at specifically would be the ADC output pins or input pins. Um, ADC stands for Analog to Digital Converters, and the Pico has four of them. There are three that are brought out to pins for us to use, and they are labeled ADC0, ADC1, and ADC2. Number four goes to an onboard uh, temperature sensor uh, that's on the Raspberry Pi Pico, so we don't have access to that one. But nonetheless, uh, for today, what we're going to be using is pin number 31, which is GP, general purpose pin, 26, and it is ad analog to digital converter number 0. In order to get a variable voltage for which to experiment with, we're going to use one of the typical devices uh, that you would use with an ADC channel, and that's a potentiometer, and that's what's shown here on the Fritzing diagram. Wiring it up is very simple. You'll have three terminals on a potentiometer. One of them, at the, we'll say in this example, the left end one, we will run up to the uh, ground pin of the Pico. The opposite end, in this case the far right one, we will wire up to our 3.3 volt uh, output, and that's on pin 36. The middle connector, the middle terminal, is connected to the Pico's analog to digital input. In this case, we're using pin 31, which is general purpose 26 in analog to digital channel or analog to digital converter channel number zero. Wiring them up is very simple, and this is very typical of other sensors that would be using an analog output. Now, uh, in our case, uh, we're using a potentiometer, and that would typically be used on a project of yours where you want to have an infinitely variable amount between fully off and fully on. Typical digital inputs are simply on or off, either 0 volts or 3.3 volts. With an analog signal, we're looking at anything between 0 volts and 3.3 volts. So you get a very wide range of input values from one control device, in this case, such as our potentiometer. Now, uh, there are many devices that utilize an analog output signal, and that would include uh, certain temperature sensors, pressure sensors, load meters, flow meters, various other things such as uh, uh, an analog uh, matrix keypad uh, that we've done a video on that'll be here on the channel as well pretty soon. So there's a lot of uses for analog to digital conversion. So we're going to take a deeper dive into that and look at it here on the breadboard real quick before we go into the Python code. Here we are wired up exactly as we would see it on the Fritzing diagram. Um, here are our three leads, our three terminals, on our potentiometer, and in this case, I'm using a 10K potentiometer. 10K is a very good uh, choice because it really restricts the amount of current that can go to the input, and it gives us a very good fine resolution between 0 and 3.3 volts. Uh, there are two varieties of potentiometers that uh, you will find if you're buying them. There are the linear taper, meaning that from 0 to 3.3 volts, your graph would be a straight line from low to high. Uh, the other type would be an audio or a log 
style and it would be logarithmic so it'd be a curve so instead of going straight up at a line from 0 to 3.3 volts it would go very gradually up and then accelerate rapidly and then slow down uh, as, as it's getting near the high voltage side. Uh, for most applications that we would do, uh, we would use a linear potentiometer. The log or audio types are really more often used in audio equipment. Now I've also hooked up a volt meter so that we can monitor the voltage coming out of the potentiometer. The purpose of the potentiometer in this circuit is to create a variable voltage output. So it's wired up as what is commonly referred to as a voltage divider. We're giving it a ground reference in 3.3 volts and we're monitoring the wiper position which will be at a, a voltage other than 0 or 3.3 volts anywhere mid-travel. So we'll monitor that here on the uh, voltmeter. And if I turn it all the way down to 0, we've got 0 volts, go all the way up, and 3.19 volts. As you can see, there's a little bit of a, a bias offset towards the 0 volt side, and that is not uncommon. Now let's take a look at the example program we're going to use for reading uh, the analog to digital uh, converter information. There's a few notes at the top telling us what this program does. Um, we've already uh, covered uh, which ADC channels are available for us to use that are on the Pico, and this uh, summarizes it here. This next bit of information, these three lines, I would like to talk a little more about. Um, the analog to digital conversion uh, is uh, restricted, the value that it will feed to you is restricted by the number of bits of resolution they've engineered into the microcontroller. In the case of the Raspberry Pi Pico, it is limited to 12 bits of data to handle the value. So that uh, value would range from 0 to 4095. That's the largest number that can fit in 12 bits of data. However, MicroPython will take that 4095 and map it up to a 16-bit value. And it'll do a conversion for us so that we get 0 to 6, 65,535 discrete values within that full range. And that's uh, beneficial if you work with different microcontrollers using MicroPython. Your code would be more portable because we're always looking at that 16-bit range, which is very common across many different microcontrollers. 10K linear taper pots or potentiometers are really about your best choice uh, for manually uh, putting input into an ADC such as we're doing here. Uh, connections, uh, just as we described in the Fit Fritzing diagram, uh, same thing mentioned here. Now we're down to the actual program to read and tell us a value for an ADC. It's really very simple. Uh, we're going to import the machine library, which gives us access to the hardware pins of the Pico. And we're going to import the MicroTime version of the Time library, so we can put a sleep in here to slow down our loop. We're going to create an object called POT, short for potentiometer. And that object will be a machine uh, analog to digital converter signal, and it'll be the uh, channel 0. You have available to you 0, 1, and 2. We're going to go into an infinite loop, as typical of all uh, microcontroller programs. And we're going to read that pot value, and that's done with uh, the assignment of a value to a variable. In this case, the variable we'll we will use is a underscore val equals pot dot read underscore 16. The underscore 16 denotes that we're going to get a 16-bit value, or a range from 0 to 655.35. We'll print that value and then we'll sleep for a tenth of a second, or 100 milliseconds, and then repeat. And that way we don't get too much data running by here that we can't see as we're demonstrating this. So we'll turn on the voltmeter, 
At this time, you will notice that we are all the way counterclockwise on the pot. I've got zero volts showing up here. And in our program, we're reading a value of somewhere about 128 to 144. And you'll, that's a typical amount of float you'll get in an analog to digital read. Um, now, it's not going to always go back to zero up to a full 655, 35 range. Uh, potentiometers have tolerance in them, and that tolerance keeps us from sometimes not getting to the full extremes of the rating. So now, at zero volts, we're getting a very low value, uh, right around 128 pretty consistently. So we'll turn the potentiometer up. And as you'll see, my voltage is following it going up, and we'll go all the way to the max. And in this case, the max voltage I'm getting through this is 3.168 volts, very close to 3.3 volts. And the value that we're getting from the analog to digital converter is 65 to 30 to 40, right in there. So that's very close to the max value that we could read. And that's how you kind of get to understand that 655, 535 would be your max voltage. If we turn it down back to as low as voltage as I can get, which is showing up as zero volts, we're reading a 128. Now, right in the middle of that, uh, 65,500 would be 32,000 and change, right? So we'll turn this up to about 1.6 should be close to about halfway be, uh, between 3.3 and 0. Um, and we're at uh, right on the edge of 32, 33,000 for our value. And that's how you can correlate between a low value, a high value, and the values in between. You have really infinite adjustment on that input between 0 and 3.3 volts and we can extract any one of these numbers as a value we would use in our program to perform an action or to compute another value. In fact, if you take a little time uh, to calibrate this routine by maybe adding an offset to it uh, so that uh, uh, exactly 3.3 volts is giving you the value of 65, 535, um, you will get very precise uh, voltage to digital conversion to obtain a voltage value. Uh, so you can do a lot with this data. Uh, analog signals are wonderful things. They can be a little tricky in noisy circuits, uh, such as those that are driving small hobbyist DC motors and so forth, where you get a lot of uh, static, we'll call it. Uh, that can really sway some of your analog to uh, digital conversion values. So you'll have to try it, see how it behaves, and then if needed, you may have to dive a little deeper into ways to moderate that through additional components in your circuitry. So this pretty well wraps up how to get and use get analog values into a microcontroller into a data format, a number in this case, that we can do uh, calculations with or perform actions on. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, if so, please subscribe. And if you liked it, uh, maybe give us a, a like on the, on the rating system here. Uh, I'd like to point out that there's uh, about 50 or 60 videos in this whole series on the Raspberry Pi Pico and MicroPython. And we're covering a lot of different uh, devices that you interface to the Pico and uh, items such as this, uh, analog to digital, threading, uh, pulse width modulation, all broken down into nice simple uh, presentations such as this one. Well, that's it for this one, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.